Welcome to the Robot Tour build tutorial. Before you start building, first check the description of this video because there may have been some changes to the kit that aren't reflected. First, grab your screws and take them out. Now, let's make the motor assembly. So, take the motor mounting block and essentially the way this is going to work is the motor is going to be mounted like this and the wires will run through the bottom of the watch. So simply need to put it so that the bottom part of the motor mounting block lines up with the bottom part of the motor. So the screws line up the screws. Grab the countersink screw. So this is a countersink screw. You'll notice that it has a cone shape for the head. So grab the countersink screw and use two of these. One important thing to note is that this is a metal on metal contact. So the screws are made of metal and the motor is made of metal. So these screws, when the motor vibrates a lot, for example, if you're transporting this in a bus or a plane, these screws will vibrate and loosen over time, which will cause your motors to become wiggly. So you should grab something like Loctite Blue and essentially dip the tip of your screw in it before putting it into the motor. And this will make it pretty nasty and hard to remove, but that will stop it from loosening over time. So if you're getting ready to transport it, make sure you have Loctite on everything. Now, what you need to do is you need to prepare the wheel hub. So grab a wheel hub. And you'll notice there's a D shape in it. Line this up with the D shape of the motor and push it on. And you'll see that it's made it to it. However, to make this more robust, there are these grub screws included in the kit. So to use these, grab an H1.5 hex bit. Now you'll notice that you can't pull it off anymore because the grub screw is digging into the shaft of the motor. And this will make this vehicle last longer. Now this, for example, is a metal on plastic contact, which means that these don't loosen over time. So you don't need any thread locker for this. Now grab the wheel, put the square side onto the hub, grab one of these rings and put it onto the tip of the hub. Make sure to push this down tight. Now grab one of the encoder magnets. These are diametrically magnetized neodymium magnets. Grab one of them and put them into this hole on the end. So now we have the motor, we have the motor, the hub with the grub screw, the wheel, the ring and the magnet. Now you can insert this into the frame. Grab one of the regular button head screws. Screw in the motor mount. Now grab an encoder. These use these F flexible cables. So the reason that these are used is because they're extremely slim. So what you need to do is you need to open up this flap on the connector. You'll see that there's a metal side on these and a blue side. So insert the metal side facing down. And now once it's in all the way, close the lid. And now you'll notice that this doesn't come out. Although these connectors are very fragile, so be careful still. And essentially, we're gonna have the circuit board is gonna go over here like this. So we want the encoder to fa be facing this way, which means that when the encoder mount is facing outwards like this, you're gonna want the encoder to be like this. So put the encoder on. Now grab an M2 screw. You'll notice that these are thinner than the regular M3 screws. And put use that to screw in the encoder. Once the encoder is screwed onto the encoder mount, add a bearing to this side. And now put it onto the motor. Put two screws in from the bottom to secure the encoder mount. And that is one side done. Do the same for the other side. Motor mount, make sure to lock tight this. Add the hub. Use an H1.5 bit to get the set screw in. Add the wheel. Add the ring. And add the magnet. Insert the flexible cable into the encoder. Put the encoder onto the encoder mount. Put in the bearing. Add the motor into the frame. 
add on the encoder. Now let's add the casters. So grab a ball caster, put it into the ball caster holder, insert it into one of the corners, and put a screw from underneath. That's one of them. Now repeat this for all four corners. Now, let's add the battery holder. The way it works is essentially we use these standoffs to place the battery holder above the motors. So first, let's put the standoffs onto the battery holder. This uses four countersink screws. Now, place it on top and add regular screws from the bottom. This is another type of metal on metal contact, so you need to Loctite these too. All right, so that's the battery holder. Now let's add the electronics. So the electronics use these nylon lock nuts. And essentially they have a little ring of nylon right here and that prevents screws from backing out. So even though this is a metal on metal contact, the metal screwing into the nylon stops these from backing out. So the only screws that you actually need to add Loctite to are these four, these four, and the four in the motors. So to put these in, grab a long screw. This is an M3 by 12 screw, put it in, put on an aluminum spacer. This stops the bottom of the board from touching the aluminum. Then put the board on like so. And finally add on the nylon lock nut. This first screw will hold it in. Now let's put the other four. Screw, spacer, screw, spacer, put it on. So the last screw. Now, unfortunately, the downside of using these nylon lock nuts is you actually need pliers to hold them in place while you tighten them, or an M3 wrench. So this is an M3 wrench. You can use this to hold one side and tighten from the other. Now you'll see that that screw is tightened. If you don't have an M3 wrench, you can use needle nose pliers to hold it and tighten with your other hand. You can see that also worked, but it is much more difficult. And there's the electronics mounted. You can see the four lock nuts. These screws won't back out. Now, let's wire everything together. So, on the PCB, you'll notice that there are these slide lock FPC connectors. And these are different from the flipping ones that were on the encoder. So. These come with this little cover from the factory. These might have fallen off during shipping, but if they haven't, just take them off now. These should look like this. And essentially what you need to do, you can pull this part up. Once you've pried it up, it should look like this. You can see there's a gap between the black lid and the actual housing. So you can see it's much higher than the other one that hasn't been opened yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire this motor to port one and the right motor to port two. So left motor is one, right motor is two. So because of that, this is left motor. It goes into port one, which is the one we opened. So grab the flexible cable. The metal part should be facing towards the left. So now you'll see the blue part is facing this side, it's facing this way. The blue part is facing this way and the metal part is facing that way. You'll notice there is some resistance to it going in and then push the black piece down and now it won't come out. Do the same with the other side. Hide the black part up. Okay, so now you can see it's up. Insert it once again so that the metal side is facing towards the motor ports. And push it in. It'll click in. You can push this down. And now you can see that these both are in and they aren't gonna come out. Now let's wire up the motors. So the left motor is this one. So it's gonna go into port one, which is this one. Take the wire, loop it through the top, and then push it in. Do the same for the other side. And now your motors and encoders are wired. All right, now let's add our water bottle holder. So first, grab the water bottle holder, put in the servo motor. Finally, add two M2 screws through the holes for the servo mount. 
Now, add the water bottle holder, screw it in from the bottom. Finally, you can wrap this cable onto the servo port as well. Now let's put in the dowel. First, we're gonna put in these screws. And these screws will essentially pinch the dowel. So now that those two screws are in, put in the dowel. Put it to the ground and lift it up a bit to ensure you have some space. There should be under a centimeter of space from the ground, but do leave some just for clearance. So now let's manage the cables. I like to use zip ties for a nice permanent solution, but you can also use masking tape if you don't have any zip ties. Add zip ties to the two motor wires, to the two encoder wires, and to the servo wire. All right, you can still see it has enough ground clearance. Now let's cut off the excess zip tie. Now let's move on to programming it. First, plug in the board. Now you've plugged it in, let's connect it to Arduino IDE. So first you need to install this Raspberry Pi Pico board library. That includes the RP2350, which is the chip on this board. So now that you've installed the board, Go under Tools, Board, and select Raspberry Pi Pico 2. Next, under Port, once you plugged it in, you should see something that's labeled Raspberry Pi Pico 2. Now, install the Rotev library. So you'll see Tektite Rotev Controller, and install the latest version. And once you've done this, under File, Examples, you can open up Rotev Empty. This is just a blank sketch that opens up a controller. So you can write some code. For example, this will write a color to the LED. Press upload. You'll see it uploads it. Now it's got that color on the LED. Okay, so I added this print statement to the code and I upload to the device. And now if I go into tools, serial monitor, you can see it's printing hello over and over. So I wrote and uploaded a program that essentially writes to the servo motor depending on the buttons you press. Okay, I press this and it moves. So this is the way that it's facing the most counterclockwise. So at this point, I'll put on this arm. So you have to squeeze it on. And finally, you can use the silver screw to hold the arm in. And now you're done building the Tektite robot tour. There's no code available for it, so make sure to learn about PID and odometry to learn how to code it yourself.